Okay, I'm going to make this brief. Pastors, please teach your people when someone is under the anointing, they are not supposed to put their hands on them, lay their hands on them. Let me let me tell you, I um I I visit a a, a, a church, you know, I went to a convocation, and the spirit was moving, um, and I began to feel the power. I could not stay in. It, it was like the spirit did not want me to stay in one spot, so. I got out in the aisle and whatever area that I need to pray in, I, I begin to walk down the aisle and up the aisle. And a lady, you know, now if she was in the spirit, now a lot of people go to these um, e events uh, um, and not being filled with the anointing. When you go to such a gathering, it is wise to prepare yourself to such an event because you don't know how the Spirit's going to move. You don't know how He's going to use you. But when you don't pray and you know you're going to a convocation or a, a type of event or revival, it is your duty to um, be Spirit-filled or Spirit-mind renewed. And so, when you get in your flesh and you're not prepared, then the Holy Go the, the the Spirit would would tell you when not to touch and when to touch. So I began to uh, pray as I was going, and I know there was only a certain part I was I was going to the end of the aisle and back. So whoever needed um, um, God's anointing, you know, God would come in. But sometimes, you know, when we intercede, because I'm also a um, a prayer war, warrior. And so a, a woman came up and she put her hand in the way. First of all, observe like Jesus did. Do you see me in the spirit or do you see me in my flesh? So if I'm talking to God and I'm praying, you don't put your hands on me. Don't stop. Don't put your hands in the way because you're interfering with with God's work. If you were in the right state of mind, the Holy Spirit would tell you, you know, you know, everything's fine. You observe, and that's why it's good to observe. Um, Jesus observed a lot of things, and he sat down and he watched. He watched. Um, the men and women putting their their arms in, and he saw that a lot of them put a great abundance, but they were a lot of them were rich. So even though they didn't give, they gave a lot, and it was accepted, but they didn't give to where they didn't have anything left. And so Jesus sat down, and then he he observed this old woman, and he saw what she had. So he looked over as he was watching. Because people don't think that Jesus sit down and yeah. Then he called his um, disciples over. He's gonna let me show you something. Notice that you see that lady right there, see that man right there, or whatever. All of them had cast in a great abundance, but it didn't break them because they were rich. But this lady right here gave more than them all because she gave all that she had. So when people are in the spirit. You have to be tuned and put your uh, spiritual attendance on. So you're interfering with God. And so I didn't say nothing the first time. And she was like, oh, you, 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 uh, you can, uh, you know, okay, I, I'm using wisdom. I know what's going on. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, getting back into the spirit. So I'm going up back and forth. And then she talks to me. Well, you can only go to, I said, I am in the spirit. This is what I told her. And I'm like, wow, people are not ready. People are not prepared. You know, this is not a show. This is not an event like, oh, you know, I just want to come so I can uh, receive, receive. You have to give and you have to open up your, your spiritual attendance. 
and um and, and, and it, which leads me to something else when someone else is either uh, unless you assist in someone and they're um, um, praying to the spirit and, and you want God to move you know then you can assist this but as the event was over I began to notice that God was dealing with a young lady and I can tell and I know that it was the spirit began to move now, I know better than putting my hands on her, touching her. I'm not talking about praying, laying hands. And when, you, when you're when you already in that, in that, uh, in that spiritual worship, you don't interfere unless God tell you to. And you just intercede. So I began to intercede for this little girl. And I began to pray. And so I um, began to uh, wave the anointing over her, you know, just wave the anointing over and God began to really use her and as we were doing that a, a gentleman was walking by and then he felt it and he went on but this is the beautiful and the wonderful thing about it he was in the court because after he felt it you know he didn't put put his hands on the girl he you know he going to let God deal with this girl so I'm let, I'm watching her and I'm keeping my eyes on her and she went back for where you know like she was gonna probably fall but I you know I was near her and I didn't touch her I didn't want to interfere God was touching her and using her cleaning her whatever he was doing maybe she was going to another level so this jet this young man came by and he just put his hands on her back first of all he was not in the spirit because prior to that I'm, I'm looking and I'm uh, observing it was just one or two that was over this young lady so this gentleman young guy he was talking and jesting yeah you know then he comes over and he sees her then he puts her hand on her back and just keep rubbing it up and down up and down first of all you can distract this person and then the other thing is whatever spirit you done picked off off of someone else or you're not in the spirit this is what you want to do so now you're interfering and so sometimes you can stop the 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 thing from from going to his level or distract the young lady so as he was robbing her i didn't say anything i, I felt uncomfortable i'm comfortable about it but i thought maybe he was a relative like okay calm down you know you, you know you can't rush the spirit but i thought he was like she was riding with him or something because he began to like stand by her I didn't, it, that didn't go well with me. So uh, as when he stopped, he went back to Justin. I asked him, I said, let me ask you something. I said, is this a relative of, a relative of yours? Um, is this your wife? Oh, oh no, no. Uh, are you, she's waiting on you? Oh, no, 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 no. I said, well, I noticed that you put your hand, your hands on her back and you were rubbing her. He was, wasn't rubbing in the spirit. He was just rubbing like this type of manner. That's distracting. And so I was like, God, just use her. So I looked at him, and I, and I was like, well, you know, this, this isn't my church, but it doesn't have anything to do with that. Instruction is instruction. And I almost told him, like, you can't lay your hands on someone. Are you a minister? I mean, you're not a minister. You Oh, are you just a friend? You know, so I'm like, should I say it, God? I left it alone. Pastors must teach their members to certain rules, things that you can and cannot do when the Spirit's coming forward, especially if they're not in the Spirit or if they're not a leader. Uh, and if you're a leader, you should know that God will teach you the anointing and when to move and, you know, obey Him. He'll let you know. Anyway, I just want to say that... Um, uh, instead of people getting caught up in, in the event and you're not, you see things but you're not really aware and then you're like, I don't have nothing to do, I'm going to let them take care of it. Well, they don't know what they're doing. So leaving it in the hands of your ushers and things like that and they're not in the spirit, you know, um, we need more orderly discipline. It's just some things you cannot do. All right.